Uh, the table shows for, okay, this is again one of the trickier questions, but we'll see why it is rather easy to solve and the things that can help you solve it very quickly. Yeah, okay, there's going to be some disturbance. Um, the table shows for each of 10 Irish weather stations and each of eight calendar months. So I have these 10 Irish stations and eight calendar months, you know, from Jan, Feb, March, April, May, and then October, November, December. So I don't have the middle four months. Okay. The average number of days per month that the station recorded snowfall during the years 1961 to 2000. So then I have data of 40 years. Yeah. So tell yourself, okay, I have data of 40 years from 61 to 2000. And what data do I have? I have uh, 10 stations and the, um, uh, the recorded snowfall during the average of the recorded snowfall during each of the years. Yeah. yeah uh, during these 40 years. So, for example, during this time period, the station had Burr recorded snowfall on an average of 4.5 days in January. So, here is Burr and here is January. So, 4.5 days. What does that mean? It means that on average, you know, how do you have 4.5? So, understand what the data tells you. How do you have 4.5 days? That doesn't make sense, right? Either a day will have snowfall or it will not have snowfall. It is a zero or a one. You cannot say that, okay, we had half a rainfall today, right? So, because it is an average. So then there will be like, in case I have data of 40 years. So then, you know, January 2019. So I, the data is like January 1961. Then I have January 1962, right? So here, let's say it's snowed for five days. Let's say here it's snowed for eight days. Then here it's snowed for three days. I have January 1963 and so on and so forth. So I have these 40 values given to me. And when I average them, what I get is a 4.5. Does it make sense that it is a decimal now? Well, certainly the number of days, the actual number of days per year, they are going to be an integer. When you are averaging 40 integers, you could certainly get a decimal, right? So then essentially these are your average number of days of snowfall uh, in each month over the average over the 40 years. Now the data is clear to us, right? Okay. Now, let's look at the questions. For each of the following statements about the weather stations listed in the table, must be uh, select must be true if that statement must be true and if the information provided is correct of course we have to you know it is given that assume that the information provided is correct then select must be true if the statement must be true based on this particular data that is given to us otherwise select might not be true so then only if we are if we are certain that it is necessarily true here we're not talking about could be true right we're talking about necessarily true then we have to select must be true otherwise in all other cases we just say might not be true okay look at um, the statement one the station with the greatest average number of days of recorded snowfall during january of years 1961 through 2000 had the greatest total number of days with recorded snowfall during those years what does this mean station with the greatest average number of days of recorded snowfall during january so first thing i'm going to do is i at least know how to find the greatest average number of greatest average number of days all these are average number of days given to me i need to find the greatest value so of course i know what i'm going to do i'm simply going to sort this right so then i found the greatest number of days is at claire morris i know that in Claire Morris, I had the greatest number of days of rainfall. All right. Now, I have been given the statement says that the station with the greatest average number of days. So then, uh, uh, not rainfall, snowfall. So, okay. I have been given that this station had the greatest total number of days with recorded snowfall during those years. How will I find the total number of days with recorded snowfall during these years? So, think about that. How do I get this particular data? The, you know, only if I have the total number of days with recorded snowfall, then I'll be able to say whether Claire Morris actually does have the greatest total number of days of um, snowfall, right? All right. Uh, recall that this gives me the average number of days of snowfall. So then in case I say, want to find the total number of days of snowfall in these 40 years throughout the year, how will I do that? I'll just say that must be 6.5 into 40. Plus, because this will give me the total number of days of snowfall in January in the 40 years. This is the average, right? I'll say into 40. I'll get sum of all the number of days of snowfall in January in the 40 years, right? Plus, I'll say 5.3 into 40. Plus, I'll say 4.5 into 40. And so on and so forth. This will give me 
the total number of days of snowfall in the 40 years in this particular station. Yeah. Now I can find this value for all other stations as well. Of course, I'm not going to do it. Just, just stay with me. But we can supposedly find this value for all other stations as well. And you know, when we're going to sum, of course, the 40 will come out. Essentially, we are going to compare the sum of the number of if I'm adding all these averages, then this is what I need to compare with other stations. Does that make sense? Because the sum is going to be simply 40 into 6 by 5 plus 5.3 plus 4.5 plus blah, 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 blah for all the 40 years, uh, for all the 10 months, um, 8 months that are given to me, right? Does that make sense? It's 40 into. Now, and this is going to be true for every station. It will be 40 into. So I can just ignore the 40. All I want is whether the sum of all these terms is the greatest as compared to the sum of all the terms for Valentina, the sum of all the terms for a slayer, sum of all the terms for cork, right? Now, am I going to add them all up to find out? Now, uh, that is going to take forever, right? And it is a uh, it is a question which essentially should take me only two minutes and nothing more than that, right? So then I cannot add them all up. But I do see that the stations that have more snowfall in January normally have more snowfall in other months also. And it makes sense. Look, because how much snowfall you're going to have depends on the geographic uh, location of that place, right? Where is it situated? Then there are some areas that receive more snowfall than they will more likely receive more snowfall in all the snowfall uh, months. Not just, let's say, that January they have the maximum snowfall and they have none in December and February and March. That, that's not realistic, right? So then I do see that, um, you know, it, it's the amount of snowfall throughout the year is kind of increasing in this way, right? Not just for January. It's kind of increasing for all of them, Yeah. So then the one which is most likely to give me competition on the total number of days if I'm adding all the averages is clones, right? So then, you know, I look at the values, I see that the values are kind of competitive. Something is a little less, something is a little more for clones. Now, all I need to do is I need to find one station which has a higher total, a greater total than Claire Marsh to say that this must not be true. It is not essential, that this is not essential to be true. Yeah, I need to find that one station. So I'm going to compare it with clones, but then does it mean that I'm going to add all the days for Claire Morris, get the total, and then add all the days for clones and get the total? Again, this is going to take too much time. Guys, recall your deviation method for arithmetic mean. Make sure that you practice it really, really well because it is going to help you save a lot of time. We are not going to do any kind of addition and, you know, find the sum of uh, or average into, I mean, I, I almost never do it for any of the GMAT questions, almost never. Yeah. So then keep that in mind. Next time when you are adding numbers to find the arithmetic mean, most likely there is a way, for you know, there is a way to use deviation so that you don't have to add numbers and get that huge sum. Yeah. Okay. So uh, how do we use deviations over here? So very simple. Right? I'm just comparing. I'll compare term to term because they are very, very close to each other. So here I'll say that clones is 0.3 less. Here it is 0.45 more, which means it's 0.2 more now. Clones overall in the first two months of Jan and Feb, it's 0.2 more. It's 0.1 less, so it is only 0.1 more now. It's 0.1 less, so the both of them are equal. In the first four months, the total rainfall of both of them is equal. Now, this is 0.2 more, and it is still 0.2 more over here, which means that the total of clones is going to be higher. And that is why I've got that one station where the total snowfall days are going to be higher than the total snowfall days of Claremont. Yeah, so then I can say that my answer over here is might not be true. So the first one is not, might not be true. Yeah, remember, we will not be required to add all these terms. I mean, even if we use the calculator, of course, it's going to be easier if we just do it like this, um, you know, orally. But even if we end up using the calculator, it's going to take just so much longer, right? So all we have to do is we have to use our deviations method over here. Okay, let's look at the next. Uh, is this clear? Uh, is everyone clear with this? Any doubts here? Should we move on to the next one? 
Okay. Now, um, Cork had at least two days with recorded snowfall during February in each of the years from this to this. So here is Cork and here is February. So it's saying that Cork had at least uh, two days, right? Cork had at least two days with recorded snowfall. Yeah. Cork had at least two days with recorded snowfall during February in each of the years. So what it is saying is that, you know, when I was calculating my February uh, total of 4.1, the average of 4.1 that I got for Cork, how did I get this average? I put together the 40 years data. How many days did it snow in each uh, year in the month of February? Now, when I put together this data, I could I could have lots of different values. Right? The average is 4.1. Then it is possible that in some year there was zero snowfall in the month of February in Cork. It is possible in some year it was eight. It is possible in some year it was four. In some year it was five. In some year it was one. In some year, whatever. Do we see that, right? It is certainly possible when I'm averaging and I'm getting 4.1, the actual value, the actual number of days of snowfall in the month of February in 40 years could be anything. It could it could be quite wide, right? The range is quite wide. A lot of possibilities are there. So can I say Cork had at least two days with recorded snowfall during February in each of the years from 1961 through 2000? No, it is not necessary. It In each of the years, it's not necessary. It is possible that in one year, Cork had no snowfall at all. Or it is possible that in one year, Cork had only one day of snowfall. That is also possible. right? So then my answer to the second one is also, can, uh, must might not be true. right? Let me go on to the third statement now. In at least one year from 1961 through 2000, the station at Valentina, okay, Valentina is over here, yeah. Valentina recorded two or more days of snowfall in a single calendar month. So in at least one year, they are saying the station at Valentina recorded two or more days of snowfall. They have not said which month, Not they haven't said any specific month. They have said that in a single calendar month, there must be a year. Yeah, at least one year in which Valentina recorded two or more days of snowfall. Now look at that. In Valentina, the in January and in February, the average was 1.3 and average was 1.4, right? In January and February. What does this mean? How do I get? I have some numbers, I have some integers. Right? Number of days are going to be integers only. So I have some integers and I average them and I got 1.3. What does it tell me about the integers? It means I could have zero as a value um, of the integers. It means I could have one also as a value. But can only zeros and ones give me an average of 1.3 or a 1.4? No, they cannot. There must be a 2 or a greater than 2 as well, right? To get an average of 1.3, which is greater than 1, I must have a 2 as well, right? 2 or greater than 2, doesn't matter, right? So that is why... This is true. This is yes, it must be true. My here, my answer is must be true. My average of 1.3 or 1.4 cannot be obtained without getting a 2 in the mix. Right? Otherwise, with only zeros and ones, if there was no 2 or greater than 2, with only zeros and ones, I cannot get an average of 1.3. It will be something like 0 0.3 or 0 0.5 or something like that. Right. And uh, this, it doesn't take time, guys. It will, uh, you know, once you understand the concept over here, it will just come to you immediately. The moment you will see a 1.3 for January or Valentina, you'll know that there has to be a 2 or a greater than 2. So, of course, then this must be true. Yeah, answer here is must be true. All right. Any doubts uh, in the question?